Welcome back to another MB Zoomer video. I know it's been a little bit longer than usual, but we are jumping back into the Suron content with, in my opinion, this is quite an interesting topic I'd like to cover today. Um, we'll, we'll get into it after we get some of the housekeeping stuff aside. So first off, um, I would like to uh, mention the brewing video I released last week. Um, it if you're interested at all in home brewing, um, check that out. It's I think it's a pretty good way to get started for cheap, uh, very small investment of money and time um, to build your own fermenter. So check that out if you're interested. But I know most of you aren't here for the brewing content. You're here for the Suron content. So that's what we're doing today. Um, second off, um, a quick update on my uh, Marzaki Bomber 58 fork. Um, I, I mentioned previously that I had pre-ordered it from Jensen and Jensen had told me that they would be getting a shipment in on January 19th. However, January 19th came and went and they just didn't say anything at all and then they postponed the shipment date another month. So I'm not super happy about that. I'm probably going to make a separate video on it. But basically, every, we're all going to have to wait another month to get that um, fork replacement video going. So for now, I'm still riding on my busted up, chopped up fork. Um, the final thing I want to talk about before we get into the actual video is I just want to share this with you. Um, it's a website called Predict It, where you can place bets on politics. So. As you can see, we got a bunch of, um, well, here's the most relevant one, next SCOTUS nominee. Then we got a bunch of election um, markets and going down. There's all kinds of stuff, foreign politics, um, state politics, all kinds of stuff. So I, I highly recommend this. I think it'll help you sort of disconnect from the all the partisan, emotional shit that goes on in politics now. So I, I highly recommend checking this out. It's just, uh, I think it's it, it's a good thing. And when, when you got money in the game, you're less likely to just be super tribal and emotional about it. So I highly recommend. I've been using it for a year. It's real money. You get real payouts. Highly recommend this. All right. Um, before we get into the video, I would like to ask everybody, uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to this channel. If you enjoy Suron content, we've got much, much more um, big plans coming in the future. So stick around for that. And then uh, like this video, please. All right. So the topic of today's video is uh, Fetchters. I think that's how you say it. Fetchter. Um fetched her Suron modifications. So this is on a forum called Endless Spear, which I had not heard about until I stumbled upon this forum post. Um, it's basically an e-bike forum, but this guy fetched her. He has some really cool modifications that I'd like to share with everybody. Um, I, the, the main purpose of it is um, he turned his Suron into a street legal uh, moped. So he registered this in, I believe, California. I'm not super clear on if it's California or can't. Oh, heh, it says California right here. So he did this in California. So you can register a Suron as a moped, a street legal moped in California, which um, is probably a good idea since they have the most strict e-bike laws. Um, other places, a lot of places won't let you register a Suron as a street legal vehicle. However, it falls into the classification of an electric bike in most places besides California, so you can ride it on bike paths or in the street. I just warn you, um, please don't be dumb about it. That's my only request. If you're speeding by people walking their dogs on the sidewalk at 50 miles per hour, you're going to you're going to piss people off. So just don't do that. Don't be an asshole. All right, getting into it. So this is Fetcher's uh, stock Suron when he got it. Honestly, a pretty cool Suron. 
I think they were shipping with the colored frames in like 2018 or 19. Um, so if you didn't get one of those, then I, I think it's um, kind of a missed opportunity at this point. He also got a very nice RST Killa uh, white fork on there. So I really like the white look. Um, looks pretty good in my opinion. So here he's just talking about how he registered it as a moped in California. Um, and he also mentions that the Suron is running a 12 volt DC um, like uh, wiring setup for um, the lighting and all of that. So the first thing you need to do to make a bike street legal is to add blinkers and um, sort of street legal tail lights and stuff. So I think the Suron's tail light is already pretty compliant, but you do need blinkers. So that's the first upgrade here is his uh, blinker build which I think is quite impressive and I actually have plans to do some blinkers in the near future as well so stay tuned and subscribe for that video um, Fetchter was kind enough to work up a wiring diagram which I found very useful so he says it's mostly correct so maybe don't take this as gospel but it will help you sort of get a start you know um, and the the circuit we're concerned about here is the one going from the controller to the DC DC converter we got 12 volts out here and then we're looking at USB uh, tail light headlight horn all that stuff so that's the circuit that we're mainly interested in here um, we also have a GPS circuit I believe every Suron has this circuit in it However, only the European versions actually come with a GPS tracker in it. So you can add your own. Um, good luck finding the proper wiring for that, but or the proper um, like plug-in for the wiring. But it's um, it's an option. You can just strip the wires. Worst case scenario. So moving on. Um, oh, he also talks about um, the easiest way to access the wires. Most people recommend to remove the ignition, which he shows here. However, he mentions in the text that he found that the easiest way is to pull the battery out and remove the front compartment um, in the battery area. So I I'm going to try that when I get to it. I haven't done this personally, so I can't speak to how well it works, but... That, that's Fetchter's recommendation here. So now we got his turn signal switch here. You will find a lot of videos on eBay or on YouTube with uh, people who have put blinkers on their Surons. A lot of times they use this switch. I bought a slightly different switch. However, I'm not. It, the switch I got is a lot more bulky than this one, it has a lot more buttons and controls on it. However, I'm a little bit concerned if it's going to fit. Um, underneath the the brake lever so that's that's an issue that I'll you know I'll, I'll get to that when the time comes but you'll you'll likely see that in another video um, me dealing with that but this is sort of the recommended switch most switches for blinkers I've seen are seem pretty cheap and don't get the best reviews but it is um, sort of the most common the most commonly used blinker switch for the Suron. So moving on, um, since he added this, um, he had to get rid of the Sport Eco Mode switch, and that is what the um, the digital readout on the stock Suron mounts to. So he had to build his own mount for that. He used an aluminum bracket. This is the first example of this Fetchter guy being very handy with just scrap metal and stuff. So um, it's an option if you're mechanically inclined, but if not, then there are plenty of extra, like um, they call them Suron display um, remounting devices. So you can mount it pretty much anywhere you want with something you buy off eBay for 20 bucks or something. Pretty cheap. But Fetcher did it himself. He also mentions um, it's loose fitting so it can spin around the handlebars in the event of a crash. 
so that may be an advantage it's also adjustable uh, to account for the light glare I've personally in my experience noticed that there's quite a bit of glare on the readouts sometimes so some adjustment would be nice um, getting on to the first lights he installed he put some LED light strips around the front fork area so that gives you some front blinker capabilities which is pretty essential as you can see in this photo it's quite bright maybe it's not that bright in person but this looks very bright so people are certainly not going to miss which way you're turning with with those LED lights he also mentions he added a resistor um, to get these LED strips to work which may well be necessary going off of the um, stock 12 volt system on the Suron if you're tapping into it you may need to do some sort of modifications for that to get it to work if you're not experienced in electrical um, repair kind of stuff or you don't have resistors lying around then maybe maybe you want to consider some pre-built options for this sort of thing moving on to the tail lights um, he bought a different tail light for his Suron which also has blinkers and a license plate mounting area the license plate mount is also important if you want to um, have a street legal Suron he did build a custom mount to attach this to the bike so that's something to keep in mind probably not going to be that hard of a job to do but it is something to note that they, they do make um, t like plate mounts for the Suron that are specifically meant to just plug and play on the Suron basically um, but you're probably not going to find too many street legal blinker kits with that that are also going to fit on the Suron and then he leaves some nice eBay links here. I'm going to link this forum post in the description. So if you're interested in doing some of this stuff, um, you can follow that link and check out what Fetchter did and then, you know, to the best of your ability um, or customize it yourself, do that, whatever. Um, next up, we're getting to tires. So he added some different tires. These are Trials tires he put on there. As you can see, they barely fit something that he mentioned is that with these new tires they those those little rubber nibs that go around the tire they were running up against his fork and it actually wore a notch in the fork so that's something to keep in mind is that you really need to be careful with tire compatibility because it can cause some damage and it can cause some major problems if your tire does not fit on your Suron. So if you're using stock forks, there's a very short list of tires that actually fit. And there are a lot of good resources on this. Um, you can do, do your own research. Um, Charge Cycle Works has some really good resources for this. There's a lot of YouTube videos comparing different tires on the Suron, as well as forums such as electricbike.com. Um, I would say Charge Cycle Works has the best comprehensive list of compatible tires. So um, stick with those. If, you, if you're not going to um, follow common recommendations for tires that work on a Suron, um, just be ready to waste some money because if your tire is too big, there's absolutely no way it's ever going to fit. So it's sort of a wash unless you resell it. Um, he's got his rear tire here. Again, pretty large uh, trials tire. He says it barely fit, but it is a substantial upgrade from the stock Suron tires since they're not very good. As you can see here, there's very limited clearance. So next up, one of my favorite upgrades that Fetchter did is the battery pack. So what this is, is Fetchter built his own custom battery pack for the Suron. It seems like he already had this pack built um, or at least set up on another bike as pictured here but it's a good showcase of the type of cases you need. Um, waterproof cases are going to be absolutely essential if you want to build your own battery pack. But before we get into the cases um, I'd like to say this is by far the most affordable battery upgrade you can get for a Suron because 
you can build your own 60 volt battery and then you can basically wire it as a backup battery for the primary Suron battery. So this is going to allow you to use the same controller. You don't need to pay for a new controller upgrade and it's going to allow you to double if not triple your range depending on how many cells you put in your battery pack. I do want to give a disclaimer here if you're not um, if you're not experienced in electrical um, repairs and design then you may not want to take this sort of thing on since building your own battery packs can be dangerous and there's a lot of things that you need to do right to get it to work properly however I think most people could figure it out if they just spend a decent amount of time doing research. I'm no expert in this stuff, I have no formal education, but I, I'm personally getting ready to build one of these once the funds and tools become available to me. Anyways, um, the cases, you want waterproof cases for sure. You want some pretty heavy duty cases. Um, next up he sort of goes over his mounting system. Um, he built just some fancy aluminum extrusion mounts. Um, this sort of thing you're going to probably not be able to follow very closely, um, but I'm sure you can come up with your own kind of thing. If you're taking on a project like this, you can figure it out, I'm sure. So there's his frame um, and sort of where he's mounting it right here. He screwed it to the bottom and then seems like he just slides in the battery pack. Um, another thing that I thought was really cool with this build was his flip up seat. So he used a door hinge as the hinge on the seat um, and he used magnets to sort of latch the seat down. So as you can see he now has room to put a tool case down there which I think is a very efficient use of space, right? Everybody has a bunch of empty space underneath their Suron seat but it sort of goes to waste if you're not doing something with it. So it, this is a pretty straightforward modification. You can just find your own door hinge, cut it down, set it up. Um, you can use magnets or you can use something similar to the battery case lock. But that should give you uh, a nice area for a toolkit or an alarm or whatever you want to put down there. So now getting into his build on the custom battery pack. Fetcher provides a very good general guide for how to build uh, your own lithium battery. You are going to need to do some more research on this if you want to do it yourself, but he gives a good overview of what is involved with it. So the key to this is going to be doing your homework. If you don't wire it right, then you're either going to have a battery pack that doesn't work at all or you're going to have a battery pack that catches on fire and that's about the last thing you need. Um, usually it's a strip of nickel that is spot welded down to the cells so this requires a lot of spot welding. Spot welders are cheap and easy to make. Um, you can build one out of an old microwave which I, you can find videos about on YouTube so that's something to consider if you want to do this sort of thing and then um, the one of the keys to getting this to work is lots of padding and insulation so as you can see he used some fiberglass tape to secure the batteries together and then uh, after this we'll get into more modifications your battery cells are going to be the most expensive part of building your own battery however it is far cheaper than building your own or than buying a, a pre-built Suron battery modification um, Suron battery mods usually cost about two thousand dollars give or take um, and building your own Suron battery is very variable but will likely cost you no more than about a thousand dollars depending on how expensive the cells are okay here's his main electrical leads and then he's showing he taped over a lot of the cells that's um, one layer of insulation there um, he's got those big heavy duty connectors on. He's got two of them since he has two sides of the battery pack. Now he's putting down some Nomex paper for insulation. Um, and it's important to insulate. 
of course. Um, this is a BMS system, so battery management system basically manages the charging of your battery. So it's going to be very important for your battery health, so I, you're going to need to do some research on this. They're not hard to wire, it's just a lot of wires that you need to keep track of. So I, I have full faith that you guys can figure this out, but just keep in mind that's another component you're going to need on top of the lithium cells and spot welder and wires and all that. So here he's packing it in the cases with lots of foam insulation to prevent, you know, bumps and crashes and all that from disturbing the batteries. If these cells fall out of place where they're supposed to be, again, you're going to run into issues with fire. And then now he's mounting it on the bike. I would say this setup looks pretty slick. Um, it's very clean and I think it's the cleanest way to add an additional battery to the Suron outside of the stock battery in the battery compartment. Um, Fetcher com claims that um, the rated capacity of his battery build is 29 amp hours which is pretty much the same as the stock Suron battery however he does acknowledge that this is 29 amp hours under ideal conditions which you will almost never be operating under in the real world and he also says the batteries are seven years old so it's probably a lot well not a lot less but a bit less than 29 amp hours however it's basically free extra battery space so it's even if it's 20 amp hours it's still a big upgrade on top of the regular battery so yeah it's um a very nice look and i also like his um caution tape on the on the stock battery there. I think that's kind of a cool touch. Um, pretty low profile it seems and then he says he can just slide it right off um, super easy. So I, I think that's a huge selling point is being able to remove that uh, extra battery pack if you decide to do this. He says he can go full throttle for at least 40 miles. Pretty impressive. Uh, when I tested my bike on full throttle, I got 18 miles until dead battery, so that's going to pretty much double your range if you're going for a battery pack like this. Of course, there's a lot of factors that play into what your range is going to be, but um, an extra battery pack is certainly going to improve it. Then he talks about mirrors, um, just some cheap eBay mirrors, he says. He mentions that they're pretty good for off-road. Um, they didn't move any at all, so... You don't have to spend much on mirrors. I got some cheap eBay mirrors as well, and they work great. Um, motorcycle mirrors should not be your most expensive upgrade. Another thing he mentions is Shimano brake pads. These are absolutely essential. I totally agree with him on that. Um, you really need to get Shimano brake pads. That You should do that before you even ride your Suron, honestly. The Suron brakes are horrible. So just, just get some upgrades. They're like 45 bucks for the brake pads um, for one set. They're kind of expensive, but honestly, you don't want to mess around. You don't want to cheap out when it comes to stopping your bike. It's really a safety issue. Next thing he talks about is uh, drilling holes in the skid plate. Um, this is maybe a questionable modification. He does it uh, to improve cooling on the bike, which I can understand since he's adding the extra battery power and riding it on the street mostly, so that's going to heat up the battery when you're riding full throttle for prolonged periods of time. Um, but if you, if you don't have overheating issues, then don't do this because it's going to weaken your skid plate and especially if you're riding off-road a lot, you're going to need to strengthen the skid plate because if you damage your motor, you're going to be very, it's going to ruin your day. So just, um, I, I have an upgraded skid plate and a lot of people do like the upgraded skid plates. Um, but if you're going to drill holes in it, probably don't do that. Riding on the street, you don't really need a skid plate because you're not needing to worry about big rocks or stumps or anything like that. Um, moving on to sort of his updates later on, he mentions the rear fenders need some extension. Um, 
that's this one here. I've also noticed uh, riding through mud, water, snow, all that stuff, that rear fender's not long enough. I get mud up on my back all the time. So They're, they do sell extended rear fenders on eBay. There are several different kinds. They're a bit overpriced, in my opinion, for a stupid piece of plastic, but they have a monopoly on the market right now, so we don't have a lot of options. Um, another thing Fetcher did was install a belt kit. So that can be seen here. There are certain advantages and disadvantages to a belt. Um, one advantage is it's going to make the bike a lot quieter. So that may be appealing to some people, maybe not to others. I kind of like my bike being loud because it's just cool. The belt also improves efficiency because spinning a chain around at high speeds like that requires a certain amount of energy. And that energy is taking away from your speed and your battery power. So adding a belt is a lot lighter, so it's going to give you more efficient energy transfer to the rear wheel, which is a very good thing. Um, However, the main advantage of a chain is that they can just take a lot more of a beating. So chains are very robust, chains are mass produced, so they're pretty cheap, and it's going to be able to take more abuse than a belt can. I've heard a lot of people mention, um, mostly in the cycling community, belts last longer, and they're pretty good in mud and water and all that. You just have to wash them out um, at certain intervals, so something to consider. This belt kit installation does not look very easy to me since you have to pretty much totally strip the bike, but it's it's an upgrade that's out there for certain people. You can get a belt kit from Luna. He also gives some uh, range testing and handling info later on. Uh, he got pretty good range out of this whole setup, but again, it's very dependent on your personal build. He's got a nice GPS on here and everything. Um, and then the last thing is he mentioned some issues with um, the motor heating up quite a bit after prolonged use, riding at full throttle. So he said he was riding for about 30 minutes at full throttle, and even with those extra cooling holes in the skid plate, the bike still got pretty warm. So take that into account if you are extending the battery and riding full throttle regularly, you're going to heat up the motor. It didn't cause him any problems, but maybe if you go for one hour at full throttle instead of 30 minutes, you're going to end up running into some more serious issues with that. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this video. Um, I, I just think Fetchter has some really cool mods here. Primarily the extra battery kit, and then I think he did a good job of adding blinkers and everything. So I, I just wanted to share that with all of you. I, I think Fetchter did a very good job putting this forum post together, and I think we could all learn something from it. So in the future, you can look forward to a video about installing blinkers on my bike. I'm going to do a little bit uh, different build than Fetchter, but... Um, just keep an eye out for that video and then I really like his battery idea because I don't have $2,500 to spend on an upgraded battery and an upgraded controller for my Suron so that makes this sort of custom battery setup the best option I would I would really love to see a company come out with a battery setup like this because I think a lot of people would be very interested in it I don't necessarily want a 72 volt Suron. However, I do want a lot more range because my Suron is only getting 20 miles on a charge right now. And I think there's a lot of room for improvement there. So this is a good way to add some more battery capacity without really increasing the overall footprint of the bike. And then it's also very modular. You can remove it whenever you want. So. Props to Fetchter for doing this sort of thing and putting it all together in a nice forum post that we can all enjoy. Um, like I said, I'm going to link this in the description, so check that out if you want to read this in depth and maybe do some of it yourself. Let me know what you think about what Fetchter did. 
and I just like to say thank you to everybody for watching. If you're still around, uh, you made it to the end. Congrats! Um, and just don't forget to leave this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. And yeah, thanks for watching. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Uh, good night.